The War Within. People are starting to find out new information about the War Within. The expansion is on the horizon. We are getting closer and closer. Here we go. Hey everyone, welcome to WowCast. Today we're gonna to talk about The War Within, which alpha starts soon. I have two special guests with me today. Please introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Ian, Game Director on WoW. I'm Tina, Associate Art Director on WoW. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Before we talk about Alpha, what can you summarize about The War Within, Ian? Well, so The War Within, I mean, of course, it is the 10th expansion to well known. It's been 10? There's no way. Burning Crusade, Wrath, Cataclysm, uh, Mr. Pandaria, Wad, Legion, BFA, Shadow. That's crazy. Video game, World of Warcraft. Wow. But even, I think, more special wow. to us, it's the beginning of the World Soul Saga. It's the beginning of mm -hmm. probably the most ambitious story we've ever tried to tell in WoW. Uh, so as you know, all expansions do, it kicks off with a journey to a new place. But really, this is going to be beginning to set the stage and establish the stakes for a conflict that threatens mm -hmm. not just you know, ourselves and, and our families and those we hold dear, but the very world that we call home, the very world beneath our feet that's been home to all of our adventures. And if we don't win this one, nothing else matters. I hope we lose so they can remake the game. So this character has been everywhere for the yeah. world within. Zelatath, she's purple, she's amazing. She's can hot. Can you tell us more about her? Yeah, Zalatath is, uh, you know, one of our key villains of the World mm -hmm. Soul Saga. The expansion is, I mean, part of it is this journey, uh, delving deeper, find Zalatath and her allies. And uh, the inspiration uh, for her design from an art side was really based on the uh, priest artifact weapon that she had been yeah. trapped in for so long. So if you look at her armor, like all the motifs of, you know, her belt, her shoulders, really take inspiration from that uh, design. Uh, even the runes on her cheeks, uh, those are a homage to Nizoth, who freed her from the dagger. Ah, Naifu. Yeah, so if later on in War Within you find yourself, you know, wiping to a Naifu. raid somewhere, just blame the Shadow Priests for not just putting the knife down, yeah, why walk away from the talking dagger, and oh, we wouldn't be here. Oh my and gosh. yet... Um, I, I actually think that's kind of cool. Like, that it just came from, like, a Shadow Priest dagger. Like, that's probably one of the coolest things that they've done with, like, the lore. Are there any uh, other like familiar it. faces that we can recognize? Uh, yeah, some of the key uh, heroes of our story like are uh, Illyria and yeah. Anduin. So these two, they've, I mean, they're, they're running a bit, right, from some of the wounds of their past. Mm -hmm. But in the end, they're going to find hope and redemption. So, wow. you know, Illyria, we've seen her uh, new design that really reflects. Nice. So she's like emo now? That's great. The duality of her character. And Anduin... Uh, we saw him in our cinematic, and he just looks, you know, a little more haggard. He's, he's been through a lot lately. He grows beard. <laughs> he's <laughs> yes, working so. on it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the name The War Within is one that has a couple of layers to it. Mm -hmm. right? Obviously, we're literally delving beneath the surface of Azeroth and going to be battling within our world. But this is also a story that involves a lot of inner turmoil and inner conflict. And Anduin is probably the most torn of any of our, our cast of heroes, given what he went through in the Shadowlands. And his journey into the darkness as he seeks to rediscover his own light is a big part of the narrative arc. And with The War Within, there's new zones. Can we talk about what our new zones are going to be? Yeah, the narrative of the expansion doesn't really excite me that much. Like, I just, I, you know, it's all right. But, like, yeah, I mean, I wasn't really that excited about, like, the dragon flight narrative either. It just seems kind of, like, uh, okay. But... You know, we'll see what happens. The continent as a whole that begins on the surface and extends beneath the earth, right, isn't we're mm -hmm. calling Kazalgar. This is an ancient home to the earthen. It's actually just off the west coast of Pandaria, about between Pandaria and Kalimdor. You know, just a, you know, a couple hundred nautical miles away from a mm -hmm. certain sword that's sticking oh. out of the southern oh, yeah. end of Kalimdor. But yes, home to four zones um, with amazing varied settings. Yeah, uh, so our first zone, uh, the Isle of Dorne. This is basically, you'll find an isolated group of Earthen there. This is so a dwarf have area. Awesome city, Dornogal, which we're very excited to, for players to check out. That'll be the hub mm -hmm. in the end. 
Uh, the second zone That's is really the winning cool. deeps. So, you know, the evocative of like mine picks, industry. Yeah. And so this is the heart of earthen industry, but it's not all just, you know, lava and fire. It's uh, mixed with these beautiful caverns, cenotes with uh, mm -hmm. light and water coming in, creating these, uh, you know, lush spaces for the players to enjoy. And then uh, we go to Howlafall. Howlafall is where we really uh, wanted to break expectations. Yeah, this this area was really cool. I really like this. This was awesome. I like this one. Uh, this is Arathi airships. Yeah. Right, underground airships, right? The first thing you'd naturally <laughs> think of when you're going under the surface. How are they going to get around? Well, yeah. Airships, of course. Of course. <laughs> And then our final zone is Ashkahet. So this is the heart of the Nerubian Empire. This is where we'll finally be able to see the Nerubians and all of their strength and glory, mm -hmm. like with the height of their civilization. I think uh, we'll get into the details of Alpha later, but everyone's journey is going to start in the Isle of Dorn. Okay. But I really can't wait until we get to Hallowfall in our testing. And I think the, you know, Tina mentioned that this crystal, it is such a striking visual element that dominates. I just, I want to see them do something that's like super dark. Something that's like actually fucking brutal. Like, Dragonflight felt too Disney to me. Even a lot of things in Shadowlands felt too Disney. The zone, imagine in this place deep within the earth, a radiant crystal of light, and the way it, you know, as it illuminates the surrounding Kill Anduin? plays with oh. the environment and some of the spawns and how the world around it reacts to it. I think when we set out to create this underground space, we knew that one of the risks was that it could feel oppressive, mm -hmm. that people didn't want to feel the sense of claustrophobia of you're always in caves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hallowfall really from the outset was built to be a place where, honestly, unless you fly all the way up to check out the ceiling above you, it doesn't feel underground. It well, feels yeah. like you could be outdoors in some vast welcoming area that's just, it's incredibly epic. Yeah, sure, I get it. When we arrive to the Isle of Dorne, what's the first thing we'll see? Well, so you're going to see something a bit different in Alpha from when the expansion goes live. There is an expansion intro experience mm -hmm. that is not currently being tested. It's something that has some you know, cool narrative elements that we want players to all experience together later in the year when War Within launches. But players will spawn in in the Alpha on the Isle of Dorne, surrounded by some debris that will look pretty familiar and pretty distinctive. And really, it's okay. the scars of an initial battle that Seems like it didn't end so well. It looks like Dalaran. Um, and the beginning of our journey, as, as, many, as with many expansions, is a bit of a mystery, a bit of an investigation mm -hmm. of, of arriving in a strange land, having this threat that we face, these visions, these whispers that heroes around Azeroth have been hearing in, in recent months, but trying to understand the nature of the threat we face, how we're going to stop it, and our journey begins on the doorstep of these ancient earthen people who are going to begin, you know, helping us figure out where to go next. They're going to become our next allied race too, right? Once we are in their trust, that's for <laughs> sure. Is there I mean, other... that looks pretty good. I would say, like, I mean, the level of fidelity and, like, the graphic design on these are really good. Like, this actually looks great. Once we are in their trust, that's <laughs> for sure. Is there any other NPCs that we're going to be familiar with? Yeah, there are going to be uh, some characters that we haven't seen in World of Warcraft in a while, but will be, you know, part of this story. Garrosh, uh, you're going to bring back Garrosh. That's because of their, you know, dwarven heritage, oh. and, you know, Magni, he hears the Radiant oh. Song. Oh. He brings some of his family members oh, along. Oh, no, champion. Uh, Moira, who is leader of the Dark Iron oh, who gives a and shit? heir to Ironforge. Bring back Garrosh. Uh, she'll be here with her son, Come on. Zagran, who who's, is now a young adult. Well, who's the, who the fuck is this guy? Uh, Dagran, the last time we saw him in the oh, he was this pretty generic looking dwarven baby. But now, uh, you know, the Dark Iron heritage is God. starting to show more in his appearance, along with his personality. So he has a bunch of these scrolls and books, uh. like really showing that he has a very scholarly nature. I think one of the one of the fun aspects of just world building and narrative in WoW is we have this vast array of characters and champions and heroes. Like, can we get some fucking testosterone like existent characters? Like, can we just have one? I just want I don't I want one non soy character. I just want one. That's all. And, and you killed you know, Garrosh. Characters. 
And whenever we figure out where we're going, what the next natural location is, what the story elements are, the first For question all, we he's ask the closest is, thing we have. Who needs to be here? Who does it make sense? Thrall is a lot better than he used to be. Want to step forward, just as when we were dealing with, you know, the Green Dragonflight or the Emerald Dream or or the. It's light. actually crazy because like Thrall, like there's a reason like me and Zach played on Thrall server whenever the game came out, like or whenever we started playing WoW in like 20, 2006. and uh, because Thrall was like the G. He was the guy. He was the man. Like he wasn't like, oh, how people feel. Like he was he, he was just awesome. Like everything about Thrall was awesome. He was just so cool. And then like for a while they turned Thrall into a bitch. But I think that really and I'm not kidding about this. I think that whenever they had him grow his hair back, he he became good again. But it was like that bald Thrall arc was like super cringe. Like, okay, this is time for Malfurion and Tyrande to step forward. Now that we're going to this ancestral homeland mm -hmm. of the Earthen with this ancient connection to the dwarven legacy of Azeroth, this is a time for our dwarves to take center stage. Yeah, of course, because it's All underground. Right, so let's talk about the eight new dungeons in the War Within. What are your guys' oh, favorites or the notable ones you want to talk about? Well, so one, let's see, one that's fun to talk about is actually probably the first dungeon the players are going to see in their journeys, and it's going to be tested mm -hmm. early on in the alpha. This what is, is it? the Rookery Dungeon in the Isle of Dorne. This looks... The Rookery is... Uh, I will tell you right now, I think this looks great. The visuals for this are great. They are extremely clean. They are not over-designed, and they're well done. I like this. I think this is great. A place where this is like a place that you'd want to be were raised and trained i think that like one thing i really didn't like about a lot of the re remakes like uh give me a second so ah uh, damn i can't find what the sword is but like the sword like this sword right here this is a sword from kelthazad and it dropped in nax 40 and then like they remade it for uh fucking let me see here uh sanctum Sanctum of Domination, uh, one-handed sword. Let me see if I can find this. A fist weapon, list of one-handed weapons on your back. Ah, uh, fuck. Give me one second. I, I just want to show you guys kind of like what I mean by this, because it's like a pretty big, a pretty big thing for me. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to find a link to it. And I don't remember the name of the sword. Oh, oh, here it is. Yeah, this one right here. Jesus. Uh, okay. Like, in, in my opinion, I look at this sword, and it's a nice-looking sword, for sure. But it doesn't have the same, like, flair and vibe as this original weapon. And I think that WoW went into, like, over-designing weapons to the point to where, like, there's just more and more and more stuff on them. And... I kind of like the simpler, more like, you know, Black Temple weapon vibe with like the, was it Soul Cleaver from Terran Gorfiend, I think? Uh, yeah, like, yeah, I, I, I like this a lot. I'm glad that they're going back to at least a little bit more things that are simplistic. Less is more. Yeah, exactly. The ancient earthen over it was over okay. The BWO weapon, um, yeah, the yeah. And Maladeth. Go hand in hand, and the earthen have a legacy of storm riders that you know we got to see a little sneak peek of. If you, you know, got the war within heroic edition, uh -huh. might have been flying around uh, on that guy. There's plenty more where that came from in the Isle of Dorne, and so and this dungeon, of course, is not all peaceful. Uh, it's been overrun by a group of corrupted earthen, known as the Scarden. And we're going to be I'm just beginning to understand where they came from and what their nature is as we fight through it. But one cool thing about this dungeon is that it's actually part of the main campaign mm -hmm. as you play through Isle of Dorne. Now, I know some people mm -hmm. are instantly saying, wait a minute, I don't like doing dungeons. I just like solo questing. That's terrible. Well, first... I really hope that Blizzard stops trying to create the game for like 15 types of mini audiences that refuse to do any content outside of their one autistic fixation. Please stop doing this. Just make a good game. 
Unfortunately, in 10.2.5, towards the end of Dragonflight, we introduced this feature called Follower Dungeons. And we're really happy to bring that to the level up dungeons in War Within right from the outset. It's one of the reasons why Classic WoW is the greatest MMO ever made. Just It's another one of the reasons. So that you can go in solo with NPC allies as you play through the mm -hmm. dungeon if that's what you prefer. Or, of course, you can just... Yeah, I think that's really cool that you can play with, like, trust. Because, like, Final Fantasy XIV has a trust system. And, like, the sad thing is that I remember I did the, the, the new dungeon in Endwalker for, like, a press event. And I did it with real players. And then I did it with the trust, the AI, the NPCs. And the, the NPC one was so much easier. It was, it was so easy. It's no problem. Uh, so much more enjoyable. With friends or random group mates through the group yeah. finder. But what this lets us do is, where appropriate, we can really have the story flow directly through dungeons in a way that yeah. we couldn't in the past, in ways that at times was frankly awkward, because sometimes mm -hmm. major villains die in dungeons. Dungeons uh -huh. are places of great importance. Like Nerzul, in a zone, I remember people complained about we that. We couldn't really tie them directly into the questing because we didn't want to create an obstacle for players who really just prefer to keep playing solo. Tina, is there anything that you like? One of my favorites is in how I actually think this is a perfect solution to the problem is that basically the dungeons you don't have to play with other people and you can just play with trusts instead. This is like an actual perfect middle ground like compromise solution to this. It's great fall. So it's called the Priory of the Sacred Flame, and it's this Erethor Monastery. So uh, one Erethor. of the coolest parts is the final boss room. There's this giant uh, window that frames the crystal that is embedded in the ceiling of Hollow Fall. And so I love, you know, the beauty of the room, as well as just how it mm -hmm. ties in with the narrative of the story as a whole. And another really cool one, it's the City of Threads. So this one is underneath the Nerubian city proper. And so it's really uh, interesting to see the ancient civilization that the newer civilization was built on top of. Mm -hmm. And just to think about the layers of Nerubian history that, you know, is in this land. Sure, that's is cool. Is that the, na the ancient civilization back in like Lich King? Even far before oh, that even. Oh, it's even farther before that? Yeah, the Nerubians, I think. You know, they were in Warcraft 3 a lot. We might think of them as monstrous or arachnid. They're yeah. one of the great powers, one of the great advanced civilizations of Azeroth. They were going to have, like, a Nerubian raid. Like, they were going to do it two times in, like, Kata and in, like, Wrath. It just didn't happen. Right up there with wow. the, you know, elves and trolls and mm -hmm. the others that helped shape the course of, of the world's history. We've only really seen hints of them. Going back to, to Wrath, if you ran the Azjol, Nerub, or Ankehet dungeons. Yep. You could see, you know, their buildings off in the, in the background. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they were a civilization that at its height rivaled the High Elves and the Nightborn yeah. on the surface. That's insane. They were, they were a big able deal. to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Lich King's armies and win until the Old Gods and, you know, their forces on another flank eventually led to the Nerubians being overwhelmed. But really being able to explore what they're all about is one of the things we're most excited about when it comes to War Within. One of the things we're excited to uh, bring is an arachnophobia filter, if you will. For all of you out there you turn all who them into uh, could crabs. never you know, go to that spider section in Nax, uh, you'll be able to turn on our arachnophobia filter and all uh, spider beasts will turn into crabs. So very pumped about that. <laughs> yeah, it actually looks... it. It, it works way better than you might think just hearing okay. that sentence. I can't wait for players well, to... I feel like you know, it makes able... sense. It seems like it... Yeah, that's fine. Pussy filter. Uh, I, I'm, I, like, I'm okay with it. It's not like it's really a big deal, but, like, I, I do think that it's weird, like, culturally, that we have, like, an, an arachnophobia filter is good, but there's not a filter for, like, alcohol. I don't know. Like, I mean, maybe I'm, like, an asshole for this, but, like, I feel like seeing alcohol can be worse than seeing spiders that's that's just that's my like i mean i don't know maybe i'm just crazy to jump in turn it on and you know, hopefully feel more comfortable in parts of our world you know this is something that when we announced the yeah. nerubian centric themes of war within at blizzcon we heard trepidation from portions mm -hmm. of our community who love WoW, but were worried they weren't going to be able to experience it. Honestly, prior to that, it's something we heard concerns about from within our own team, where there are, you know, 
people who genuinely felt uncomfortable with these elements of the game that we were building together. And so we set out to try to find a solution that would still, you know, preserve the fidelity of the game, but really make it more approachable, more accessible to everyone. So speaking of the Nerubians, once yeah. we reach level 80, we're going to go to the new raid, Nerubo Palace. Uh, is there anything you want to speak about that? Yeah, this raid is epic in so many ways. Uh, one of the coolest parts is there's this beautiful uh, showpiece uh, that is just in front of the Queen's Palace. It represents the Nerubian race. That's and it cool. just shows how highly Queen Ensrek thinks of her people and herself. Yeah. This raid will get one of the sections of the is raid. Is that one going to turn into a crab too? Sanctum. This is where, you know, only uh, VIPs for the Nerubians get to go and uh -huh. you really get to explore the dark elegance of her palace. I think, again, as we were just saying, this like, looks the cool. Nerubians, we need to. Like, the, the visuals for this are great. I think this is awesome. They're an advanced race, very, you know, just this epic civilization. I think there's some parallels probably to going back to the Nightborn in Suramar and mm -hmm. what going into that city and that palace felt like. We really want to show the sophistication here. It's, this is not a monstrous supervillain lair. This is, you know, a, a superpower. It reminds me a lot of like the that Venthyr. We find ourselves, you know, facing off against. In Shadowlands. But yeah, the, the Queen Anserek encounter that Tina mentioned, she's going to be the end boss of sort of the initial season, the initial raid tier. Uh, the encounter team is mm -hmm. hard at work on this one. I can't wait to see it tested later on in beta. Um, this is, you know, the, the whole room is really purpose built to showcase some vertical elements, and you know, just it's just an incredible set piece. Okay. But we want cool. to, as always, integrate the environment wherever possible into our encounters. So you're facing off against both, you know, a very powerful magical user, but also someone who is arachnid in nature. Mm -hmm. And how do we kind of deliver parts of the fantasy of, you know, scaling a web? while locked in combat against the Queen. Those are the things that we're currently exploring. Can't wait to see that up for testing. Does that mean we're going to get tier sets again? I um, I don't know if that's really going to work. I feel like a lot of the different types of like weird fights that Blizzard does like that end up being kind of... Um, clunky. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, last time we tried taking them away, I recall <laughs> torches and pitchforks in the street. Yeah, people were upset. New tier means new tier sets. And these days, you know, unlike years and years ago when you only mm -hmm. had when you had to raid in order to get the tier set, now you can get them from a wide array of activities, whether you're which is good. a raider, Mythic Plus player, or an outdoor world player, which includes mm -hmm. now delves. Ah, delves. Let's get let's start talking about delves. Yeah, I mean, delves are one of the major new features in mm -hmm. War Within, and I think we're really excited to offer a, a more. I feel like delves, like delves, are going to be the thing that will either make the expansion like kind of good or bad. I, I think there's a good chance because I, it feels like like this is like their this is the new Torghast, it's the new island expeditions, it's the new war fronts, it's the new um, you know you could say like covenants or artifact weapons, like yeah. Uh, I'm actually really kind of curious to see like how this is going to turn out. I'll be right back. It's the new world quests? Yeah, I hope so. Because I think world quests are great. Shared progression oriented extension of the outdoor world gameplay that we know is the favorite of so many of our players. And you know, delves are these seamless experiences integrated into all of our zones where you can have these localized, varied adventures alongside in the first mm -hmm. season, Brand Bronzebeard, either on your own or with friends. Um, and finally, you know, get a shot at some endgame epic rewards just through an extension of the outdoor world ecosystem. This is something that's been like long overdue. Because I think that one problem is that there's a lot of casual players, and like I think even I fall into this category now, that like want to play WoW, but I don't want to play and like have to do Mythic Plus or rating. I just don't really want to. Uh, it's not fun. But like, I want to play the game. I just don't want to play the end game systems that exist right now in the game. So there needs to be something for people that I like to do. People, people like me that like to play. I like WoW. I just don't like the end game systems in WoW. Like, I don't find Arena fun. I don't find raiding fun, and I don't find Mythic Plus fun. But I like the game. And I, I know it sounds weird, right? Well, it's like, oh, you hate you hate all the systems in the game, but you like the game. Yeah, I do. I do. I think it's great. But this hopefully will be like that solution. Then you don't like the game? What the fuck? Yeah, but like that's not the way it used to be. Like, I liked Mythic Plus and Legion. 
And now I feel like it's too over-designed. I liked raiding uh, in Legion and really before then, but now I feel like it's too over-designed. Uh, I liked PvP, but it's just too complex. There's too much going on. And like, you could say like, oh, you're casual now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, yeah. And so like, and I feel like there's a lot of people like that. And like, we still love the game, but I don't want to have to like be hyper focused on like seven different debuffs and have to download like weak auras to like min max this like it's too much I just want to play the game I just want to have fun that's it you'll be able to get it from the great vault right exactly yeah, yeah. super exciting yeah I, I think this is going to be so really one of cool our goals with building delves was we really wanted the player to just feel like they adventured came across a place and could just you know go in and see what's inside mm -hmm. when you walk up to the delve there's this you know dark misty door and you click on it and then it just disappears and you just walk into your own personal delve instance so very excited about that they're just well, gonna I mean, be different faces had yeah. that first experience on the isle of dorn it's like the mists of pandaria uh t little fucking farm thing you know alpha uh the first delve they're likely to encounter is earth crawl mines you're going to encounter uh -huh your good friend Bran Bronzebeard outside an ancient earthen mine that has been overrun with Nerubians who are borrowing up from the depths. Bran will ask you if you want him to outfit himself as, as a healer or as a damage dealer to help support you. And you'll venture in and have your very first delve experience. Um, you'll be able to choose whether you want to do it on tier one or tier two difficulty. Tier mm -hmm. one is kind of the default. This is for everyone experience. Tier two is for those who want to opt into a bit more of a challenge because that's what they enjoy. Uh, there will be higher tiers. Yeah, I think also that's good. That's really good. Because, like, again, look at how popular the Mage Tower was. And I feel like RuneScape, like OSRS, is a really good, like, kind of... Uh, like proof of this is that a lot of the bosses in OSRS that people do, people are doing them solo. So like the whole idea that like in an MMO, you have to have a lot of group challenges and that should be the pinnacle of playing an MMO. I think that's an old school way of thinking now. And I like the idea that MMO doesn't necessarily mean you have to play with other people. But it's that you share the world with other people and you can take on challenges together or, you know, asynchronously. You know, you're doing them, you're doing the same thing, but not at the same time. And that's good. Like once human. Uh, yeah, yeah. A lot like once human. To be fair, that's not exactly it. But yeah, damage intake isn't guaranteed in most RuneScape boss fights, though, which wild fights are usually not designed around. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly, like, all the nuances, but I do think that having solo challenges in an MMO, it sounds counterintuitive, but I actually think it's super important. That can be unlocked at max level as part of the end game and seasonal mm -hmm. progression. And we really just can't wait to get player feedback from the outset, really all through Alpha, on this new system, on, you know, how it is or isn't working for you, and yeah. whether we can, you know, really meet everyone's expectations from people who just want a casual romp as an extension of their outdoor world experience to those who want a solo progression challenge that they can really strive to overcome. Do you um, guys remember whenever I would play Queen and do the, um, the withered army training in Legion? That was really fun. Yeah, those were the fucking days, man. 10 years ago really help shape how this evolves Close. but we're so excited about delves as a central part of war within yeah i'm excited that we're going to be able to just jump in and get or like go solo with bran or you can have friends but also just get rewards in that way especially the tier sets with the catalyst exactly. and then that really cool mechanical mount mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah so this is going to be an introduction to the, sort of the delves end game as you hit max level as you hit 80 and start mount. to get Some a sense of the, of the delves ecosystem Right at the start of that, we're going to give you this epic customizable mount. Kind of this. this is really cool. I like that a lot. And so, are they going to do the thing that I was hoping that they would do, where like you can put like, for example, like the you know the wyvern head, or like it's like in Diablo, the successor to the like customizable in 3? drakes you had in Dragon Isles. Yeah, this is You'll awesome. Be able to, through doing delves, earn a variety of different customizations cool. and attachments that you can mix and match to really create your own personalized flying mount. So does this mechanical mount have... Uh, I think one of the low-key best mounts in the game. I unironically think this is one of the best mounts ever made in the game. I love this mount. I think it's so cool. So I'm really happy to see this. 
dynamic flying. This is one of the big questions we had moving on from Dragonflight. We had the question of like, well, okay, dragon riding is amazing. Mm -hmm. We're in, we can't get rid of this, mm -mm. but how is this going to work alongside of the hundreds of mounts that we already have in players' collections? And how, from a design perspective, how do we navigate a world where some mounts can fly in this awesome way and others can only do yeah. the old quote unquote static flight? Uh, fortunately, I think our art team was able to work out an amazing solution for us. Yeah, we were very excited to be able to make pretty much all mounts be able to dynamically fly. So that's really cool. Having the Lightforge Warframe light up like that, that's awesome. Even Nimrod's head in, we figured it out, we made it work, so... I'm really excited that's to see great. Nimrod's head going, like, super fast. <laughs> Another feature coming in the War Within yeah, that's that I'm awesome. really excited about, as well as a lot of other people, is Warbands. Yeah, Warbands, I mean, again, I think as I summarized it at BlizzCon, it's just account-wide everything, mm -hmm. almost everything. Uh, it, this, you know, players increasingly play multiple characters, and this is something we've heard loud and clear that, you know... So this is one thing that I hope Ian understands, is that one of the reasons why a lot of people might play multiple characters is because it gives them multiple chances to do things that are locked out with timers. So, like, I had a bunch of extra characters, but I only really had all of those extra characters because I wanted to run ICC a bunch of times in order to get Invincible, or in order to get something. So, like... I hope they can find a way to make it to where, like, I don't have to level up and play an entirely new character just to have another chance at something that I want to get in the game. And, like, I don't know how they can redesign it that way because, like, there are so many systems that are built off of that. But it's one of the things that I really appreciated with Final Fantasy XIV is that I could just keep running the same dungeon over and over until I got them out. Or you get enough of the uh, totems... Uh, in order to turn it in for the mount. That's what I'd love. For me, it's the different classes. Yeah, I just, I would only play class, like, I love Warrior. I think Warrior is my favorite class, right? It's obviously my favorite class. So, like, if I want to play another class, I'll do it because I enjoy it. But in a lot of cases, I feel like WoW kind of makes you play other characters in order to achieve certain goals in the game. So, I I'm not sure if they can fix that with Warbands or not. The game needs to be more alt-friendly. The players yeah. want to be able to choose where they spend their time across their different characters instead of... Like, I, I have a very unpopular opinion. I think all gear should be account-wide. I think the only exception should be you cannot make gear that's account-wide. Like, if you receive a piece of gear and you can't equip it on your current character, then it's wasted, right? So that way you don't have, like, a warrior stealing all the mage gear in like a raid like that would be stupid but um like if i'm a warrior and i want to play a death knight i feel like i should just be able to mail my armor over to my death knight straight up literally no restriction whatsoever no problem whatsoever nothing why is and why 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 is that because i just want to i i i want to play a death knight that's why it's literally that simple like i don't care about like i want to get all the gear again like i already did this they have to reprogress everything individually. And yeah, so, I'm, yeah, the Warband is, is just, it is your account in its entirety. It is your it's collection great. of champions, whether they're Horde or Alliance, regardless of what realm they're on, they're all part of the same Warband, which gives access mm -hmm. to various shared progression systems. And then you get to see all of your favorites on, uh, you know, one screen together. So uh, in our new UI, we'll have Warband, and you'll be like, you know, move four up into that space and see them all hanging out around a campfire. Yeah, it's just like uh, Lost Ark. Is that Ark. on the character select screen? Yeah, the character select oh, screen. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah they, a... they took this from Lost Ark, like flat out stole the roster system. Great idea, by the way. They This is what Blizzard does best, is stealing something from another game and then putting it in their game. This is good be totally different than what we're used to logging in exactly yes you'll you'll know like this is a completely different world it's a completely different welcome into world of warcraft um what we showed off at blizzcon was just actually a ui mock-up but we're excited to see people react to the real thing and really as with everything else you know warbands are a foundation there this is a system that we want to build the next generations of world of warcraft on mm -hmm. now in 2004 wow launched with everything character based in 2024, yeah. WoW is going to shift to everything being account-based. And we can't... Thank God. This is a great thing.
like to hear feedback about what other areas we can expand upon here, and that's going to shape not just War Within, but later updates and expansions. And yep. we're just you know just excited about this platform that better reflects the way our players are looking to play World of Warcraft today. You can't forget about PvP. Let's talk about it. Yeah. Well, I think they can forget about PvP. They've done a great job at that. Yeah, I feel like they can do that. Yeah. Uh, so we have a new battleground called the Deep Hall. This one is earthen themed. It's a bit of a mashup between a Silver, Silver Shard yeah. Mines and a Rathy Basin. Yeah. So you know, hold some points, push some carts. Uh, we're really excited to see how players uh, navigate around this okay. one. Yeah, and in terms of how players are interacting with it, um, there is an overhaul to our rated battleground system that is coming with War Within. Uh, people who've been paying attention over the course of Dragonflight have checked out our uh, battleground blitz our kind of brawl that was testing out a 8v8 solo queue rated battleground format, we're happy to move to that as a default for how rated battlegrounds are going to work going forward. I think we're really excited to make... Wow. That battleground experience that personally I've always felt is the best part of WoW PvP. Yeah. That larger scale, more cooperative, objective-based I'm um, really glad to hear Ian say that. I totally agree with him. I think making WoW PvP fixated around Arena was bad for the game. You know, collaborative, competitive setting as opposed mm -hmm. to the deathmatch style in Arena. Yeah. So, to make that more accessible to everyone who, you know, loves Battlegrounds, loves mm -hmm. PvP. Um, we know, you know, it's a bit overdue, honestly, us mm -hmm. adding a new Battleground map into the it rotation. Is. The last one was uh, uh, Seething Shore. Forward. We're excited to have a new framework that can make Battlegrounds more central mm -hmm. to the end game rewarding part of PvP. And yeah, this is just you know, the beginning of the And also chapter. it's more accessible. Like, it's just really hard to get a group for RBGs. That's really the issue. It's that, like, I mean, if you want to get 10 people together for RBGs, it takes forever. And then whenever you finally do it, you lose one game and three people leave and then you have to refill it's like the ratio of time spent making a group towards playing with the group is like totally wrong another feature in the war within is hero talents we've been having a lot of articles talking about them what are some of the other things that we can expect with the hero talents coming forward well i can say there's gonna be no more blogs and articles releasing hero talents because they'll be there for you to jump in and play. And I okay. think that's you know, the, mo the most exciting thing. We're so grateful to the community for all of the feedback and discussion in recent months, going back to the first blog in December. This uh -huh. really helped us shape this central feature of how people's class gameplay is going to evolve. Um, you're going to see hero talents that you haven't yet seen for the trees that we haven't discussed previously. And for many of the ones that we have released, you'll log in and see changes that are directly shaped by your feedback. Uh, by what we heard. <laughs> Summon a fucking pit lord? What? That's kind of cool. Very loud and clear in some cases about what was and wasn't exciting. Um, we, we've committed to have as many uh -huh. of these playable right from the outset as possible. We will have 100% of the hero talent trees available and playable not long into alpha. And then the rest of the journey is going to be about iteration, mm -hmm. tuning, and really just dialing it all in to make the polished experience that everyone is excited about. So what are we doing with professions in the War Within? Uh, I think when we really overhauled professions in Dragonflight, we saw that as, as a kind of a permanent shift in how professions were going to work going yeah, forward. Yeah, probably just more of the you same. You expect, you know, new recipes, different enchants, yeah. but the same fundamental sort of progression and structure to professions that you saw in Dragonflight. One big piece of feedback that we heard throughout Dragonflight, though, was a bit of frustration with the work order system from crafters who were just looking to complete quests, looking to skill up, but found themselves competing and often racing to grab work Yeah, work I, I never really... I, I think the work order system could use a bit of work, but, um, you know, I didn't really use it a whole lot. ...with their fellow crafters. Um, so what we're excited to offer is a baseline availability of basically NPC crafting orders. Uh, so it could be, you know, Earthen in Isle oh. of Dorne who need a hammer made or need a helmet made, and they're constantly putting their offer, their work orders up onto the, onto the market. So there's always something for you to... New World Town Board quests. ...to grab. The player yeah. ones will still be more lucrative, but there should always be that baseline availability if you just want to skill up, you just want to there practice you go. That's your trade good. skill. And there's also some cool potential for narrative tie-ins, the ability to mm -hmm. have quests that now can point you towards that system because we can count on it always being there. 
So with Dragonfly and the profession overhaul, there was also a UI overhaul. Is there anything we're going to see with The War Within? Yeah, so the UI overhaul, it's basically a continued improvement that we want to make over time. One of the things that I'm very excited about is the uh, quest bang over, uh, overhaul. So we're going to have a bunch of new icons that will make uh, what type of quest it is much more clear. One That's of just, I mean, this is just good. I mean, I feel like, again, there should be more of a focus on making the default UI better. The new ones that you'll see is one that's like we consider an important one. These yeah. aren't campaign, but they're pretty important to your character. For instance, some uh, that mm -hmm. must do ones for your profession, or right. ones where you're gonna unlock the revival catalyst. Yeah, yeah, like almost every game has that. Where like WoW only has like three distinctions right now. They have like daily quest, main story quest, and then regular quest. Where like a lot of games have like five different distinctions or like seven. As we've leaned more and more into outdoor world gameplay and varied gameplay there, different mm -hmm. types of public events over the course of Dragonflight, honestly, we reached a point about halfway through Dragonflight where we just took a look at our map and kind of recoiled in horror at the number of different icons that were there. And it was just a kind of icon yeah. soup situation that made us say, like, it's kind of at this point, we've advanced far past the world of, oh, you just have some daily quests or world quests here, we need a clearer visual language. Mm -hmm. And so really excited to just evolve that central interface that players Wait, use. the game's evolved, so they need to have more icons. Like, yeah, it makes sense. Log in and see what there is to do in WoW on a given day. So that covers the War Within, and the alpha is starting extremely soon. Pretty much working on getting it stood up <laughs> as we speak, as we sit here right now. Oh, wow. And yeah, so the way this is going to work is pretty similar to the Dragonflight alpha for those who, who followed that where really each week, each new build that we release, mm -hmm. we're focusing on a different piece of War Within to concentrate player feedback and our attention to just really get all that feedback in and maximize the quality. So we're going to start off zone by zone, level band by level band. This first week is going to be the Isle of Dorne, level 70 to 73 or so, the dungeon and delves there, as well as universal systems like Hero Talents. Yeah, With yeah. successive alpha builds, we'll move on to other zones, other portions of War Within. I'm inviting more waves of people. If you haven't gone to the website to opt in yet, that's a great reminder to do so. <laughs> um, we, you know, really pick from. Really, true, there's no secret to it. We're just randomly pulling lots of folks in and hope to get by the end of this countless people into our testing. Um, once we've gotten through all of those rounds of focus testing, we'll move into our beta phase, which really is an end-to-end -end holistic test of War Within from 70 all the way to 80 and the end game and beyond. And throughout, you know, feedback, bug reports, suggestions, all of this is instrumental mm -hmm. to helping turn what we have now into the finished product that we want to be the best it possibly can be for all of our players later this year. Thank you Great. so much for joining me for The War Within. And thank you for joining us for this. Really, this is one of the most exciting times ever for the development team when we get to pull back the curtain and welcome you all into this world that we've been building in the last few years. So can't wait to see you in the alpha and can't wait to hear all of your feedback. Really looking forward to everyone checking out what we built. Thank you so much. See you guys in the alpha. Well, that was a nice video. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to be honest. I actually think that a lot of what they said was good. I think like all of this is good. I I'm trying to think if there's anything that out of this that was like problematic or I disagreed with or whatever. I think it's good. Yeah, I mean, r realistically, I, I don't think that this expansion is, like, innovative in a way that, like, Legion was innovative. But it looks okay. It looks probably, I, I would say it probably looks better than Dragonflight. And I think that Dragonflight kind of needed to happen in order for them to, like, build a foundation on the game again. Because, like, for such a long time... There was, like, Legion borrowed power, and then, like, there's Wad borrowed power, too, to an extent with, like, the ring. And then there's, like, those, those uh, you know, like, spell upgrades and shit like that. Uh, you know, then you had, like, a Shadowlands, and, and then I think there's, oh, BFA, BFA in the middle, right? So, check Wow had lots of info, including mounts and sets. Yeah, Dragonflight was 5 out of 10, this is 6 out of 10. I feel like this one will probably be closer to, like, a 7, I would assume. But, I mean... I, I, I don't know. I, I would be happy if, if it was a 7. That would be fine. I don't care about dungeons or raids. Looks don't matter. Fights and trash does. I'm worried about the looks will be good, but the fights will be trash. 
I think that Blizzard really needs to like rethink the way they do dungeons and raids and like who they're really designing it for. Because I wish that Blizzard like like dialed down the amount of mechanics and made the existing mechanics that happen more dangerous. It's like, you know, instead of like having 20 mechanics that are happening, have like five of them that happen or three of them that happen, but each one, if you do it wrong, you die. And I think that's one of the things I kind of liked with Classic WoW, for example, is that like in Classic WoW, there were very few things you could do wrong, but if you did them wrong, it was really bad. Like, for example, if you get knocked out of the ring whenever you're fighting the two dragons in Sunken Temple, you are instantly dead. If you get knocked down the hole, you're instantly dead. But there's only like two or three of those things that can happen. So being able to like overcome that challenge is... I, I think it's more accessible for like an average player because it makes sense. Like, you know, oh, you don't want to fall down the hole. Uh-huh. And so that's one big component to it. And another big component to it is that it's not overwhelming. And I think that things like that's really clear. Yeah, it doesn't require people to use add-ons. So that's what I hope they do with the dungeons and raids. Because, like, and I've even seen MDI players and, like, really high-end players say the same thing. But from my perspective, like, if I look at how easy the Mythic Plus dungeons were in Legion and, like, how few mechanics they had, playing the game was more relaxing and more fun and now I feel like whenever I do a Mythic Plus dungeon, I have to be like 100% dialed in at all times, and it's exhausting. And I'm okay with just like getting, yeah, big pulls, big damage. Yeah, that was really fun for me. I enjoyed it a lot. So I hope they do more of that. And so there's this one too. This is about the uh, flying in the game. So this is uh, dynamic flight. Here we go. Get ready for a new era of flight. Formerly known as dragon riding, dynamic flight Sandstone brings the Drake. newest, fastest, most active way to travel to old zones and new. From the leveling campaign through endgame on hundreds of your favorite flying mounts. Let's explore everything you need to know about dynamic flight in the war within. All right, let's see it. World of Warcraft Dragonflight introduced adventurers to a completely new way of traversing Azeroth called dragon riding. This faster, more immersive form of flight reinvented how heroes explored the Dragon Isles. By dragon the way, I think one of the big reasons why dragon riding is so popular is because it's faster. Like, that's like a huge component to it. Like, I like dragon riding more, but the fact is that it is way faster, and if it was the same speed as old flying, I don't think it would have been as popular. Dragon riding made flying an active experience, allowing players to ascend, surge, break, and whirl through the landscape at breakneck speeds on customizable mounts. Yeah. Players took to the skies in the open world, dungeons, and the final raid, as well as pushed their limits in race courses throughout the world. I remember doing those. That was fun. In the war within, dynamic flight is being improved and expanded upon keeping core elements like vigor-based abilities in place yep. while granting players earlier access, more mounts to choose from, more courses to race on, and the ability to toggle between dynamic and traditional flight modes. Yeah, because like for me, I don't always want to use dragon riding, and I like old world flying because I can just tab out and AFK. As early as level 15, or even earlier if you're a drag theme, characters will be able yep. to learn dynamic flying. This is allowing awesome. new champions to navigate older zones mm -hmm. and experience leveling like never before. Dynamic flight skills will be earned as a part of leveling up, allowing players to fill out the skill tree as they progress. This is very good For idea. players coming into the War Within at level 70, mm -hmm. dynamic flight will be available early in the Isle of Dorne, and upon unlocking, flying mounts will be equipped with all their talents. This means that finding glyphs will not be tied to dynamic flight progression, but for mavericks who enjoy the thrill of the hunt, glyphs in the Dragon Isles will remain in place purely for achievement. That's good. I think it's good to have those still in the game. Little little bonuses like that. If, however, you prefer the more passive style of flying mm -hmm. introduced in Burning Crusade, you can toggle between dynamic flight and traditional flight modes. 
In previously existing zones, the ability to switch will be available immediately at launch. So and you're going to have dragon riding everywhere now, which is awesome. As Algar, That's switching crazy. becomes available after leveling through and exploring the new lands thoroughly. At the War Within's launch, over 440 mounts will be converted to enable dynamic flight. Holy shit. With more than 200 unique models and over 50 fundamentally different shapes and sizes, conversion has been a significant undertaking that allows you to once again show off the shining stars of your collection. Yeah, that's Favorites awesome. They like put that Ashes much work into Alar, this. Invincible, yep. Gmod, the Sandstone Drake, and the Hive Mind will all be capable Gmod, of dynamic huh? flight. That's crazy. With all your old favorites available, there will be no shortage of mounts to tout. But two special mounts are worth seeking out as well. The Delver's Dirigible, earnable through the all-new Delves feature, <laughs> is a cosmetically mega-customizable mount with color, nose, wings, thrusters, top, and even decal options that continue to expand as you progress. The Algarian Storm Rider is one of a kind, featuring a unique vigor bar in its user interface. It also comes with a special ability called Lightning Rush, which can give you a boost of speed without spending vigor by expending static charges that accumulate when flying near walls. That's Lightning cool. Rush is expanding to other mounts starting in the War Within, allowing everyone to both zip and zap around. Racing Great. will also continue to push pilots to the peak of their capabilities. New courses will be available in each new zone, offering a brand new circuit of achievements and an exciting way to explore various landmarks and landscapes throughout Kazalgar. Yeah, I think that having content like that is great for the game because it's just super fucking casual. Like the races, are those you are ready great. for a whole new era of dynamic flight? Mount up and actively soar through Kazalgar and beyond in the War Within. I think like one of the issues that WoW has like on a meta level is that there's so much content in the game that's built around like, you know, 10 years of like gatekeeping with like Mythic Plus, raiding, PvP, stuff like that. And so giving people that are like new players the ability to do things in the game that are fun, that's like really what what matters the most. Like making sure that like solo players and people play because like you're never going to be able to get like somebody who's played the game for 15 years to want to go and play some random person. You know, play with some random new person. It's just not what they want to do. But like, you need to give new players the ability to enjoy the game. So yeah, having world content is super, super, super important. And I'm really glad, like it's crazy they redid all of these mounts. That is fucking nuts. Holy shit. Final Fantasy ran King of Accessible Side Activities? Yeah, yeah. Having side activities and having ways to progress without getting gatekept. And also, like, because then you have, like, the other, like, added factor of add-ons. So if you don't need to get gatekept and you don't need add-ons for something, then it's accessible to everybody. Like, for example, Plunderstorm. Plunderstorm, I think, would be a very big success. And that's, that's at least, like, my take on it. Yeah, add-ons? Yeah, exactly. Just, like, hunts? Uh, yeah, yeah, stuff like that. Exactly. Let me look at a few more of these, and uh, we'll see some of the characters. Uh, so these are some of the mounts in the game. Uh, I'm going to just go through maybe like, uh, you know, 20 of them or something like that, and we'll just look at some some of the stuff that they've got going on. Okay, so uh, mounts for War Within. Okay, Cloud Griffins. Well, those are nice. This is good. Okay. These are basically like griffins, but they're, uh, you know, uh, they've got little little streak things on them. That's nice. Look at my Firefly. Let's see, Mole Rats. So that looks nice, too. Okay, these are good. Wow. I, I feel like especially this one looks really good. Oh, I can't zoom in on it. But, like, yeah, this actually looks great. Uh, like, I, I kind of like mounts that aren't, like, super over-designed, or at least, like, they look clean. Like, this is a clean-looking mount. I like this. And there's a lot of them, too. Holy shit. Oh, oh, it's these, too. What the fuck? You just sit on them and ride them around? That's so fucking dumb. I love it. And look at his tail. Look how big the tail is. Oh, God. Okay. A fire bee. Wow. Yeah, these actually look pretty good. Look at this. Fuck. Yeah, this one's cool. Yeah, what the fuck? A chitin? 
Okay, so you can ride on these. These probably are going to fly like the Venthyr mounts. That's what I would kind of assume. These are good. Earthen Paladin mount? Bro, what the fuck are those horns? That is massive. I want that? Yeah, I wonder why. That looks awesome. And then they all have this, too. There's a lot of the different rams. I guess the Paladin one is just the exclusive one there. Okay. Wow. Jeez. Dude, there's so... How fucking many of these are there? It's like 50 of these fucking rams. Oh, my God. It's 18 rams. And then earthen horses? Hmm... How do I feel about this? I kind of like this. It's an interesting idea. Yeah, what do you guys think? Yeah, I haven't really seen it yet. It looks kind of like a dog. Yeah, it does. It does actually kind of look like a dog. Okay, and then you have a firefly? What the fuck? What's this? Okay, this is nice. Yeah, it's just a... It, I, I think it's having small amounts like... What the... What the fuck? This one is really cool. I, I, I like this one a lot. This one might be my favorite. That's badass. Yeah, this is really, really fucking cool. And I guess, like, you're obviously on the top of it. Yeah, that is fucking cool. It's like a Voidwalker. Yeah, they're like Shadow Voidwalkers. This is the Voidwalker right here. Or the, uh, the version of it that looks like a Voidwalker. And then you have a spider, too? So I wonder what happens with arachnophobia mode if somebody else is on this mount. Does it turn it into the crab mount? Or is it just like, fuck them? And there's a lot of these spiders. Holy shit, look at this. Yeah, it turns into a fruit basket, is that it? And then you have a unicorn. What the fuck is that horn? Bro, this is the most scuffed unicorn I've ever seen. Yeah, this is the, this this shit is so scuffed. Yeah, it's like a narwhal. Yeah, look at he's so thick. Oh my god. Okay, and then you have fire bugs. Well, I like these. Yeah, I think all of the little bug mounts like they added those in like uh I think they had those in BFA. Yeah, I think the first one was like the bumblebee they added, and then they added a bunch of them in like 8.3, I believe. So it's good to see them, like, doing... Oh, wow. That looks really cool. I feel like, also, like, one of the things that really separates these is some of the colors for these are just crazy good. The B-mount walks now. Yeah, look at that. Purple one. Yeah, that looks awesome. And there's a gargoyle. So these are, like, the Venthyr mounts. Let me see. Which one looks the coolest? Probably this one. Yeah, this is just, like, the Venthyr mount. This looks really good. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, just straight up gargoyles, pretty simple. Gorms. This is really cool. Yeah, they're like mini gahoons. These are awesome. Yeah, the dune worms. Yeah, I feel like these are really cool. What the fuck? I want to see, like, what the actual models for these look like in-game, too. Because, yeah, right now, these look awesome. What are these, flesh bugs? Oh. Okay. These look like, uh, you know, maybe something that they were going to add in for, uh, you know, the Necro Wards and Shadowlands, but they just decided not to do it. I was back. Yeah, this looks awesome. Remember the Mail Muncher good times? Oh, God. Yeah, that was a long, long time ago. But yeah, some of these look really good. Like, the colors, I feel like the colors on these are really good, too. Uh, vicious warm out for Horde. And it's like, okay, it's one of these spiders. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so this is gonna, this is like the Shadowlands. Like, those little fucking floaty boy mounts. Okay. And then, what's this? Vicious warm out for Alliance. Okay, it's just another spider that... It's a boat. It's just a fucking boat. Awesome. That is really cool. Does it fly? I bet it probably doesn't. 
But maybe it could. The Lynx? Um, I'm going to be honest. I actually think this is one of the best looking mounts that I've seen. This is really good. Yeah, out, out of all of them, I feel like this is probably in my top three. Like, which ones do I like the most? I like this one. The boat is really cool. Um, I like the Cahoon one a lot. And I like these. And there was one more. It might have been probably, I would say the Ram is probably there. Yeah, oh, these right here. I like these. Feels more like classic WoW. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like getting down to like more basic designs, which I think is really good. But something like this is really cool too. And it's like obviously pretty over designed, but it does look awesome. Yeah, these new mounts look really good. And then you have the new. This is like the Hunter set. Oh, here's the Warrior set. Mm. It's all right. Yeah, it's all right. It looks like the uh, the set from Antorus. No, uh, Tomb of Sargeras for Death Knights. It has kind of like the same horn pattern on it. Yeah, this could be really cool. At least it's better than the other one they were adding in. Like that brown one from before? God, that was awful. So yeah, this one is pretty colorful and I like that a lot. It's terrible? No, it's not terrible. Okay, let's look at the other ones. Um, make sure I have everything else here. Uh, new NPC models. Okay. Hunter. Monk. Evoker. Death Knight. Okay. So this is going to be Druid. Uh, I mean, this is, I, I feel like this is just your traditional Druid set. It's like in between a Druid and a Shaman. Like, the, the colors on that don't look good, but this looks awesome. This looks really, really good. Yeah, I think it's really about the colors. Like, because the colors for that really bring it out. The same with this one here, you know? Helmet sucks. Yeah, helmet's a little bit, uh, uh, a little bit lacking, I would say. Okay, what about Rogue? Hmm. So you're like an ethereal Rogue? That's kind of cool. Yeah. That is cool. I like that. It's too simple. That's a good thing. I think making sets more simple is always good. Not always good. Is is usually good. You know, rather than having them be super over designed. Yeah, I like that. This is a it's a pretty simple design, but it makes sense. Refresh, there's more. Okay. And let's see here. Possible allied race, hence at Iron Wolves, Season 4, Diablo 4, Outdoor Arathur Armor, Allied Race Customization, Legendary Trinkets, Heronier Customization, what the fuck? What the hell is this? What the fuck? I guess these are okay. They're vampires? They're like night elf trolls? Oh yeah, I guess that makes sense because night elves descended from trolls. Well, fuck. Okay, so we might be getting another allied race. Okay, what's this? Out... Cloth sets? This is awesome. Yeah. This is really cool. Holy shit. Oh my oh my god. Bro, this is and, and then they have a void one too. They've got the Pope hat? Yeah, these are amazing. Look at that. I like it, man. I do. The void one goes crazy. Yeah, Scarlet Crusade. Yeah, it's coming back this time for sure, right guys? Leather sets. Man. Man. 
you know, they can't all be winners, okay, guys? Yeah, they can't all be winners. All right, what about the mail set? Uh, this is okay, I guess. It's not awful, but, like, maybe it's that the Priest one was so good. Because, like, this one is just amazing. This is so, so good. Whereas, like, the leather and the male ones are like, okay. What about the plate? Okay, please be... All right. Okay. Yeah, fuck leather and the mail wearers. Yeah, fuck them, man. This is fucking awesome. This is so cool. Looking good? Yeah. The red one, Imperius from Diablo? Yeah. This is badass. Look at this. God damn. Bro, that is so fucking clean. Holy shit, that is clean. Wow. Oh my god, this is... Jesus. Jesus, man. The Void Knight? Yes. Oh my god, this is cool. You need to get it? Yeah, yeah, you've got, I've got to get these sets. I remember, like, I felt this way. Remember, like, the Plate Warfront set? I love that set. This kind of feels like the same thing, you know? This is awesome. I actually think this is probably the coolest looking one. Like, just, like, the colors. Like, this one is awesome. But it's, like, very flashy, and so is this one. Like, I guess they're all good in their own way. Oh, they have weapons, too. Okay, here's the one-handed axe. The gun. Nah, this is kind of stupid. Dagger. Nobody cares. I guess this looks kind of nice. Yeah, sure, it's okay. Warglaive? Eh, decent enough, but I don't really use those. Okay, let's get down to the what, what matters. Oh, it's a flail. Okay, that's cool. You have the purple one right there, too. And then you've got that mace, too. This, actually, you know what? I bet this mace looks really good in-game. This looks awesome. Yeah, look at that. And then you have the offhand right here, obviously like an incense burner. I feel like, yeah, that with like the preset would look so good. Okay, let's get let's get down to what Okay. This is very clean. I swear to God, if I hold it right there, I am going to lose my fucking mind. I'm going to lose my fucking mind if I'm holding this weapon right here. It should be down here because it looks cooler. Yes, I know it's not realistic, but it looks way cooler. And I hate I hate how it's like you're holding it in the middle. It's like you're bunting with a baseball bat. God. Okay. And then you have this pole arm. This one looks pretty nice. I actually really like pole arms. I think my character even has pole arms transmogged right now. And uh, yeah, that one looks good. And you got this one too. Yeah, all these are... I swear to fucking God, if this sh if this shield is not the size of my character, I am going to riot. This shield needs to be the size of my entire character. That's what I want. Yeah, I don't want some little fucking little buckler or something like that. I want to have a massive fucking tower shield. Insane shield. Yeah, it's a sideways shield. Well, we'll see what happens, right? But it does look really good. Or if it's sideways on your back. It only matters how you hold it whenever you're, um... Like, the Bulwark of Azanoth is sideways on your back. That's no problem. Yeah, I want to see how big this shield is. And then you have the staff as well. I feel like, depending on how these lighting effects work, this could actually look incredible. Like, I, I'm, I'm, like, imagining, like, what this would look like with, like, that priest set. I'm going to be honest. I think these look way better than the tier sets. Like, these, to me, capture, like, more of, like, a traditional WoW feel. Where, like, the tier sets are just, like, you know, okay, it's another one of these, right? Yeah, this is awesome. And look at the purple one, too. That's so cool. Okay, now we get to what really matters. Okay, swords, one-hander, who cares? Okay. Okay, but how big is it, though? Because, like, this doesn't really tell me anything. Like, this looks awesome. 
But like, how big is it? If this is a really big weapon, it's going to look fucking amazing. Looks so good. Looks stubby? Yeah, I swear to God, if it's like this big, I'm going to lose my mind. But yeah, I want to see a massive fucking sword. Look at that. That is so cool. And then you have the wands, too. Uh, they look nice, I guess. I mean, do casters even care about the way their wand looks? I don't even know. They're so small. I really like uh, pieces of gear like this. And I wish there were more pieces of gear like this that were large two-handed weapons that are just, like, very basic, like, fantasy weapons. Like Thor's hammer. This isn't really Molnir, right? But, like, it's it's close. And then what's this here? Okay, it's just the same thing, but a different... Wait, what, 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 what even... Is this a broom? Like a sweeper? Like, I, I don't even know. Yeah, brush. Yeah. Well, either way, I, I feel like a lot of these weapons, like, these look like... Dude, this with that armor set? Holy fuck, this is amazing. This is so clean. Look at that. This is what I was talking about with, like, sometimes less is more. There's not a lot of over-design to this. It's pretty simple. But if this, this blade should be at least half the size of a player's character, okay? Like, I'm talking about minimum half the size. That's a clean one. Yeah, exactly. I like that a lot. There's depth to it? Yeah, there is. This is really, really well designed. And what about here? Legendary companion trinkets. Bronzebeard family compass. Get your bearings and meet up with Bran, who swoops in to deliver a lot of damage and then granting you... Really? So we're at 1.7 million damage. Okay. So we're going to have an item... We're going to have a, a, a fucking stat squish after this expansion. Uh, yeah, I can see that. Okay, so you can basically, like, equip your, your followers. That's cool. That's kind of what I would expect, but it's still very cool. And then we have the new NPC models. Okay, so we have Alaria, who has gone, like, emo or, like, scene. Okay, that's good. And then I guess that's her weapon. Anduin. Bro. Look at his fucking face. It looks like he's been on customer support. He's been on hold with customer support for like eight hours. It's bad, man. Jesus. Jesus. It's been mewing? Yeah, I guess so. Moira Thessarian? Okay, that's about what I'd expect. Yeah, I already saw that already. Dagran Thessarian? And I guess that's like the little kid and now he's an adult now. Absolutely looks like a fucking Redditor. I don't even know what to say. Farron Lothar? I don't even know who this is. Is this like a character in the in the story now? Who is this? Black Lothar? No, Lothar, like that's no, that's Anduin Lothar. Hmm. She's Arthurian? Okay. High speaker Elric. This guy just looks like a, uh, he looks like, um, he looks like the COVID-19 virus. You know, whenever they would show a picture of it? Yeah, that's kind of what it reminds me of. I don't know, maybe that's just me, but yeah, that's the first thing I thought of. Magni Bronzebeard? Okay, so he's not as shiny now. Uh-oh. Or Winna? I guess this is, oh, that's like one of the, and then there's the, uh, the Queen, which is the last boss in the new raid. The Candle King. This is pretty good, too. I'm going to be honest. These are good. Uh, Void and Ethereal NPCs. All these look really nice. Look at that. Earthen NPCs. Nerubian Und... This could be a mount. This could very, very, very easily be a mount. So if Blizzard wanted to do it, I mean, I wouldn't complain. This would be a very, very cool mount. And you got the Nerubian bats as well. Oh, I like the tail. The tail looks amazing. Nerubian priests. Yeah, those were always in the game. They were actually... Oh, we have Gahoon, like mini Gahoons. Those are cool. That one actually, like, I'm going to be honest. This one looks really cool. It's like actually kind of creepy, you know? It's a new storm mount. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, all these look really good. Okay, and then this is the hunter set. Man. 
man, nobody cares about hunters, right? Nobody gives a shit. I mean, this is okay, right? But I, I think the Arathor sets are just way cooler. I'm going to be honest. I think they are way, way, way cooler. This is okay, though, I guess. I, I could see somebody using this helmet and shoulders in, like, another set. Yeah, to be decent enough, right? And then you've got monk sets. Nobody cares about monk sets. I kind of like this, though, to be fair. Yeah, this, this actually kind of looks good. It's like a Shogun helmet or something like that. The ha horns look weird. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of cool. I feel like... I feel like what happens with a lot of sets with Blizzard is that... The budget goes from top to bottom. So, like, the helmet and the shoulders are, like, super cool. And the chest is, like, okay. And the gloves are okay. And by the time that you get to, like, the belt, and, like, especially the legs and the boots, they're like, ah, oh, we ran out. Yeah, yeah, we ran out halfway through, so this is just what you get. Glowing becomes over the top. Yeah, I could see it becoming over the top, too. But, okay. Um, I'm mad. I'm fucking furious. This should be the warrior set. This is so stupid. This should be the warrior set. Why isn't this a warrior set? This is so dumb, dude. Like, this is so- this is dumb. Oh, what do you mean? What do you mean they get that? The fucking scalies get this? Oh, come on. Wasted on the fucking evokers. Oh my god. I think this is the coolest one, by the way. Like, the this is the coolest set. Like, not this one specifically, but just like all of these. Best looking by far? Yeah, this is insanely fucking cool. This is awesome. No Warlock, though? We, don't, we haven't seen Warlock yet. Let's look at Death Knight. I like this. I do. This one doesn't look that good. Neither does this one. Mm. I I think this one looks really great. It reminds me of like this is like this would be like a last boss if they ever made like a tall desire, you know, like the that like uh pyramid area in Zuldazar. Um like this would be the last boss. Yeah, Warhammer boss. Yeah, I kind of like it. Uh, I know obviously like it doesn't fit like the traditional Death Knight theme, but regardless of that, I still really enjoy it. I think this is really cool. Yeah, it's like almost like a Warhammer 40k set. Yeah, something like that, like Chaos Space Marine or some shit. Yeah, this is cool. And I went through all the rest of these. This is the Warrior set again. Like, going back and looking at it, like... You know what? Like, if you have, like, that electrical aura around you all the time, then I bet it probably would look cool. Warrior L? No, it's not an L. It's just not a W, okay? I'll tell you that. It's definitely not a W. Uh, let's see. I think it's okay, though. Like, I would say at, out of all the sets, it's, like, in the middle. So I guess we're going to have the alpha come out in, like, the next day or two. Holy shit. That's crazy. Um, wow. I was out? Okay. I'll probably look at it tomorrow, then. So fast? Yeah, holy shit. The Paladin Mount 2. Character screen background. Heritage armor. Oh, man. Yeah, I feel like a lot of these are really good. It's not already out. They shut down that server. It'll be public soon. Okay, okay. So it's just people spreading misinformation. What a surprise. Watch the new raid photos. Okay, I'll make sure that I look at everything else. Tell me if you on War Within, uh, point around here, uh, direct your class restriction, most likely removed. Everybody knew this was going to happen. Dungeon encounters and abilities. 
Okay, so this is maybe a little bit of the stuff in the dungeons. Oh, there's a second page. This is the new raid. Just want to make sure I've got everything. Warband Bank. Account-wide leveling rewards. The Fate of Delarion. Oh, fuck, it crashed? Damn. Well, I mean, it's been up there for a while. Yeah, again? Yeah, they fucked it up. It's crazy how they keep... They need to get somebody new who moves that city around. Yeah, what are they thinking? Okay, they don't really have any sort of uh, pictures on this. It's just random mechanics. Probably pretty simple whenever you actually play the fight. And this is the actual raid itself. This looks really nice. I feel like for a lot of the people that like... Whenever Wrath came out, we were all kind of expecting this raid in Wrath. Uh, am I the only person? Like, I thought we were going to get this instead of Trial of the Crusader. Yeah, this looks awesome. Yeah. Some Rubian raid? Yeah, absolutely. And then, like, in Cataclysm, they had it. It was, like, the Forgotten Depths or something like that. I don't remember exactly what it was. Uh, but, like, they even had a name for, like, what the raid was going to be. Looks like the Forge? Yeah, this is awesome. Yeah, that looks great, man. Crab Raid? Yeah, something like that. Heart of Fear plus Castle Nathria? Yeah. This is really, really cool. Oh, yeah. I really like the way that looks. I'm going to be honest. I think that looks amazing. Like, I know this is just a picture, but this is great. Mythic Plus Dungeon list in there. Yeah, it's not really too big of a deal to me. I'm not that worried about it. And I guess this is all the maps. Okay. And you have... Okay, all of these. Makes sense. Um, okay. And then you have the Warband Bank. The Warband Bank offers storage that is shared with all members of your Warband. Do you wish to purchase this tab? And every... So you need 3 million total gold to buy every single tab? I think that's good. Yeah. That seems good. Yeah, sure. Because, like, really, look at the prices here. Like, the first two of them, first is 1,000, the second is 25,000, third is, like, 100,000, like, nothing, right? And then 500,000, that's a pretty good amount, right? And then it's really just the last tab that's like prohibitively expensive because it's a gold sink. I think that's one of the best ways they could do it. I'm going to be honest. I think it is. They want those tokens? Yeah, it definitely is going to incentivize people to buy tokens. Like, that's a fact. But any gold sink in the game would do that. There's no need for it to be that expensive. I think that they're doing it as a gold sink to remove gold from the economy. That's really what it is. Realistically, people aren't going to use all the tabs anyway. Yeah, exactly. So that's not really too big of a deal. Uh, Account-wide leveling. Additional 5% extra experience up to level 80. And 80, I think, is the cap uh, for War Within. Reach level 80 with 3 characters, 4 characters, 5 characters. That's crazy that they're doing this. Remember whenever I said they should do this? That's crazy. Wow. What a good idea. That's... Wow. Wow. Look at that. Damn. Wrath of the Lich King out? Yeah, thank God. I always thought heirlooms were boring, and I wish it was better that you were just able to get, uh, you know, get... What do you call it? Uh, get faster leveling, and that way you could still replace your gear. You don't need to wait till the war within the launches. Uh, enjoy some new account-wide bonuses. Achievements for reaching max level on two characters now reward you with a toy that allows you to open your warband bank anywhere. Fuck, I'm gonna have to level two characters then. Shit. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm gonna be honest, guys. I feel like all of this looks pretty good. Yeah, I, I'm I'm being serious. Like, I actually think all of this stuff and everything looks good. I've been pretty outspoken about how the War Within didn't really excite me a lot as a player. And I still don't think it's really that exciting. But it looks like they're trying to do some good things. New Alaria is hot. She is hot. Seen Alaria. The Alpha is fucking sick. Yeah, this is good about the end game. That's what I really care about a lot. It's like, what is like the solo player endgame for a while? You say this every expansion? I do. 
I do. But, like, I would say that my hype for... So, going into every expansion, what was my hype level? Legion was an 8. BFA was a 9. Shadowlands was an 8. Maybe a 7. And then Dragonflight was a 6. And this is about, like, a 6. I would say it's somewhere around there. Yeah, Shadowlands, I knew Cove yeah, I knew Shadowlands Covenants were going to be bad. And I also thought that Legion legendary weapons were, or legendary stuff was going to be bad too. So I, I wasn't really as hyped about it for that reason. My BFA hype was a 10. Isn't that sad? Disappointed with uh, hero talents? I only looked at Dark Ranger. Yeah, I haven't seen the warrior hero talents at all. What do you need to see Blizzard do to get an 8? Um, remake the end game without a reliance on add-ons. Like, I, like, in order, I feel like the game is massively over-designed. And I wish that Blizzard made the game way easier and then got rid of add-ons. So, like, you would have, like, kind of the rough same difficulty to an extent, but that difficulty would be uniform through all players. Rather than, like, people that don't have these tools who are unable to compete with people who do. It's like the level of awareness and gameplay that add-ons can move your... Like, there's... I mean, there's a reason why, like, World First Guilds pay somebody to make add-ons for them. It's because they're really useful. Like, they wouldn't do that if it didn't help them. So, yeah, I, I'd like to see that. That's the main thing that I would want. More than anything else, that's what I would want. I think that the more solo content that Blizzard has and the more easier into game content that they have, the more people will play the game. I do think that WoW, like retail WoW, has so much stuff in it that it's really hard to convince somebody to come in and play the game because there's been like 10 or 15 years of cyclical FOMO that have been put into the game that you don't have the ability to re-earn. I think that's a huge issue. Fresh Worlds uh, that can ban all add-ons. Yeah, I would like to see them try that. Yeah, it's very unapproachable. And, and I think also, like, if you removed add-ons... And also, like, again, so my realistic opinion on this is, like, I know that there are some add-ons that are totally fine, but I do think that the only way Blizzard could actually approach this would be banning all of them, because I think drawing the distinction would be too hard. But I think Blizzard should ban all add-ons. All uses of all add-ons in any capacity whatsoever. And then if there are a handful of add-ons that Blizzard feels like players need to have, like accessibility add-ons then work with the add-on developers and integrate those into the base game. And, like, whenever I say remove add-ons, you guys are thinking, like, I want to make the game play the way it plays without add-ons. Not necessarily. I want to make the game play the way that it plays with add-ons in a middle ground between the two, but then make the game easier to understand so then people can come into it and understand it without needing all this context. So it's like you're looking at it from two different directions. Like you're making it harder without add-ons and making it easier with less mechanics. And so like the end result is like just a more um, legible gameplay. I would even be okay. And this is going to be like a super unpopular opinion. I think they should get rid of combat logging in the game. I think they should at least try one tier in maybe Season of Discovery with no combat logging. Because I feel like logs have become toxic. It, it's, beca it's just too much. Like, the culture and, like, the, the the gameplay that it's created, it's just too much. And, like, I'm the guy that started... I'm one of the guys that started that. I wouldn't say I'm the guy that started it, but, like, I, I definitely capitalized on it, right? Uh, but, and, and even I'm saying this. So, no DPS meters? That is exactly what I'm saying. I think that there should be a way to tell if people are underperforming. But I don't think that having a DPS meter should be the solution. <laughs> oh no. Oh boy. Oh god. Oh, what's this? Oh gee. <laughs> oh god. This poor little pal. Oh god. Oh my god.
they could save this if the shoulders here were a little bit more advanced and the gloves were more advanced and the boots were more advanced and the helmet was more advanced and the belt was more advanced and the wings were better <laughs> maybe then it would be good you know I, I, and I'm, not, I'm not saying it would be I'm just saying maybe it would be right Jesus. You just integrate DPS meters and metrics into the back end? A report from F to S plus based on performance? Yeah, yeah. Like, I just, I do feel like logs have been super toxic, and it's like in classic WoW it even happens. And I think that's what they should do. I hope that at the end of the World Soul Saga in like nine years, they remake the whole game. I hope the end of the saga is Azeroth dies... And there's some weird fucking cataclysm event, and uh, everything is remade. Warcraft 4 comes out, RTS is back, World of Warcraft 2 comes out five years after that, and it's a uh, complete neural link deep dive like Sword Art Online, and then uh, you know I won't have to worry about going outside anymore. That's what I that that's what I want, and just Blizzard give me give me what I want. But until then, I guess we get this fucking stupid shit. Oh my god, this is so pathetic. Ooh. This is the Paladin set? Man, if this helmet doesn't look better than Imperius's helmet from, uh, fucking, what's it called? Uh, Diablo 3? It's gonna be bad. It's gonna be really bad. Warcraft Universe Online? Yeah, exactly. Shangri-La Frontier, you know? Something like that. Man. Could do Monster Hunter multiplayer and post-hunt rewards. Who did most damage, most traps? Yeah, exactly. Like, Lost Ark has a similar system to that. Without DPS meters, how would you tell leechers and raids, though? Well, you would make raids easier to where a few people underperforming wouldn't cause the raid to be a complete failure. I think that, like, the performance requirement for raids are too hard. And I, I don't want to see them go back to, like, Classic WoW. No, it's too easy. But I, I, I think it's just it's just too hard. Just simply too hard. Participation trophies? Yeah, basically. I think playing an MMO is always a participation trophy. If you really want to play a challenging game, go play an online PvP competitive esport. I, I don't want to have WoW turn into an esport. I, I don't want to have it be like a, you know, super sweaty game. Yeah, it's just like, yeah, go play a fighting game. Yeah, go play Tekken. Play Street Fighter. I mean, they're great games. Should there be raid difficulties? Uh, I would love if there were two. If there were, there was like one, like, this is my perfect world, right? I would love if there was one raid difficulty and there were activatable hard modes on some bosses. Basically, Old War. I think there's too many of them now. Is that someone good at Tekken? No. The last time I played Tekken, I was eight years old. And all I did, I remember I played Yosemitsu against my friend, and all I did was spam jump attack, and I won every game. And I, I think he, I think he stopped playing the game after that. Yeah, it was like 1998, 1999, something like that. Yeah, it was a bit, it was a, it was a while ago. It was the same friend that actually showed me RuneScape, and um, I think he still does. I don't know if he still does cosplay now, but he used to do cosplay all the time, and he's the one that made me stop watching anime too. Because he uh, he showed me, I think it was like either Bleach or Naruto. I think it was Bleach. And I hated it so much, I stopped watching anime until I saw Berserk. And I came back and I started watching anime again after I saw Berserk. Because like, Anna, like it was so cringe to me. I I stopped watching the entire genre of everything. I, I hated it. Until not tonight. No, I'll probably start it in just a few minutes. Uh, let's see if there's anything else I was going to look at today. But yeah, I mean, The War Within is looking pretty good. I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it. And uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't really know what else to say besides that. I mean, I really hope that the game gets better. And I think that a lot of the concerns that I have are very legitimate. And the people that, that think like I do with this kind of stuff, I think that there's a lot of them. And I think there's like, there's more people that have quit playing WoW than people who are playing WoW. And I think finding content for us is really important. And... I just want to see more solo content in the game. That would be really fun for me.